Good morning, everybody. This is Rabbit Hedgehog with Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City, and I'm going to be doing one of our used bike reviews today. And today's motorcycle is the 2023 Rocket 3 GT from Triumph Motorcycles. The last time I got to ride a Rocket 3 was a very short test ride, but I was very impressed with the motorcycle and the power and everything that at the time that 2300 cc engine provided this one is the updated one this frame came out in 2019 with the new engine and everything it's a new lighter weight aluminum frame the other rocket 3 was very heavy uh, this one is actually just around 700 pounds so for the size of this thing it's fairly light single sided swing arm action going on there Really cool looking motorcycle overall. Walk around it here real quick. Added saddlebags. Of course you have a shaft drive on this thing. This engine is bigger than most cars nowadays. Technically 2.5 liters. Uh, most of your cars, for instance, like mine is a 1.5 liter. So, <laughs> this thing is massive compared to to the modern vehicles clamping this thing down is two massive brimbo double disc brakes up front single in the rear sharp looking motorcycle overall and this thing had a ton of technology added to it in its update to turn these on your ignitions down here you turn to on has a fob system in it you also have a little power port adapter up there. Multiple controls here. We'll go ahead and start turning it on. We'll go all the way down. It'll bring the screen alive here. Uh, this one only has 1,762 miles on it right now, so it didn't have too many miles going through it. Um, you have a lock button here that locks the motorcycle down, as you'll see, and shuts it off. Um, we can get that back on real quick and then you have multiple different screens and everything to go through this one does have heated grips installed horn basically your menu option changes and all that good stuff with cruise control mode button flash the pass all that good stuff on the left side right side as you can see you power on the motorcycle by pressing up go all the way down will take you toward the start but it will also start the motorcycle up hazards and then your home screen, where you can use all the good stuff. Uh, rider, rain, road, and sport modes. I'm going to put it in sport mode because why not? And all that good stuff, ABS to road mode and all of that. So I'm going to be playing with that. Over here you have fuel, miles per gallon, uh, live MPG, current range, what ride mode you're in, temperature, time. ABS sensors, turn signals, um, service engine light, oil light, all that is right there. Here's your modes right here where you can see the different modes and stuff on there. So, like I said, I'm in sport mode now, um, which is up there. You can do that by that button there. And um, quite a few different things that you can get into. You can go to the bike setup screen. You have a hill hold assist, how your indicators, traction control, services. So it goes through all that information for you. Uh, your trip setup, display setup, defaults, all that good stuff right there. You have a gear indication right there, speedometer, tachometer, all that right there in front of you. Fuel gauges, lots of information on that TFT screen. And uh, let's go ahead and start her up. All right, getting it started up. Triple engines are a very interesting setup, especially when it's longitudinal. Most of us are used to the triple being up front and across like your Tigers or your Yamaha, uh, you know, 900 Tracers or FZ09, MT09, stuff like that. We're used to them being a parallel and forward where this one is longitudinal uh, in line with the motorcycle so you actually get 
a little bit of uh, crankshaft action. But it's not as pronounced. It's mostly on start once everything's going. It, um, it levels out, so you don't really get too foot much of a push, but you do a little bit to the left there, it looks like. Of course, everything is going through a six-speed transmission. Let's take it on the road and see how she does. This motorcycle has all the power in the world available to it, of course, because it is such a monstrous engine. I remember the old one having over 160 foot-pounds of torque. And this one is just as much or more of a monster, of course, because bigger engine, more power available. And this chassis, I can already tell you, is much lighter than the old one before. It automatically feels so much lighter on its feet and so agile. The old one, you did have to kind of argue with it a little bit to get it to where you wanted to go, but not too bad. I mean, it was just a big bike. This one feels tremendously lighter and somehow more narrower. I feel like the seat is more pointed in than the old one. It's not as broad and it allows you to reach down to the ground much easier. And the way it tucks you into the tank is much different. And uh, you know, it's not anything to complain about. It's actually rather nice. I'm in second gear at 35 miles an hour right now and just under 3000 RPM. This thing redlines at around 67, 65 to 6700 RPM per the redline indicator there. So there is no taxing of this engine whatsoever right now. And it is smoothly burbling along. Uh, good engine braking whenever you pull down uh, from the throttle and roll forward. In terms of seating position, it is a hybrid between a cruiser and, and standard because the way the bars are placed, they're very low. So it comes, my arms come straight down to the elbows and straight out to the bar um, and I'm kind of hunched over slightly toward these bars and it just very much well feels kind of like a sport bike from the waist up whereas the basically waist down is very much a cruiser feel because my feet are slightly forward they're not fully forward by any means they are a little bit more forward than mid. And when I come to a stop here, I'll try to point that out. So you got hip, straight to knee, and slightly forward down to the foot. Of course, massive foot as you can see there. And the controls are a little cramped for a size 14 foot I will say that I have to kind of kick it out to the side like that if I don't want to hit anything so if I'm in ride position I'll slightly be like that to stay away from the brake pedal and all that good stuff so that is one thing I will note if you got the bigger feet then you will have a little bit of crampedness but not too bad not the worst I've been on. I can actually kind of rock my heels backwards a little bit as well. Yes, please get it. <laughs> if you get it, I can get it. Oh man, it's just amazing how much power this motorcycle has. I need to actually slow down as it is. Being in fourth gear, it's just so dadgum smooth and powerful that it's easy to get lost track in how fast you're going. I'm still going too fast because this thing is remarkably smooth. To activate cruise control, simply sit, uh, press on it, hit set, and forget. Folks, I don't want to get in trouble taking out a motorcycle. I just want to ride it and enjoy. And uh, I'm telling you, the power on this thing feels limitless. Because being in third and fourth gear, you're already more than highway speed without 
any problem whatsoever. It is ridiculously powerful and smooth. So, so smooth. Usually triples have a little bit of an imbalance, but part of that is you have a drive shaft going one way, crankshaft going another, and it's just able to balance itself out better, and it just feels right. Everything in the mirrors is super smooth, and the ride is very compliant. Up on the forks, you are fully adjustable. In the rear, you're fully adjustable for compression, rebound, and dampening. So a very good suspension set, especially on Oklahoma roads, even though this is a newer one, it is still a very choppy road. And sometimes on motorcycles where that suspension is tighter, you'll hear a uh, 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 you know, in my voice, not on this one. This one is just a nice, smooth ride. When it comes to the transmission, it is very spot on, banging through the gears. It's really easy to index and tell where you are. The only problem is, is it's got such high gearing, you, you don't really need too many gears. Right now, in sixth gear, going 65 miles an hour, I'm only pulling around 2,400 RPM. Again, 65 to 6,700 uh, red line. And that means I've got a ton more to work with. And even at current speed and everything, if you give her a rip, she just starts counting. I mean, counting. No, there, it just rolls so fast up. So even in top gear, you have such a broad torque range with this engine that it just wants to rip no matter where you are. So you can rev it up and you can kind of lug it down a little bit, but it's still going to pull monstrously well. This seating position is rather comfortable. The seat itself has a nice scallop to it with a nice back to it, which with this much power and much pulling power, it allows you to be planted hard into the motorcycle. And for my frame, I'm six foot tall, 32 inch inseam. It's super comfortable, easy to flat foot the motorcycle. And it's a very well balanced chassis. So the weight is not burdensome by any means. Again, this one's around 700 pounds. So still not the lightest motorcycle, but a ton lighter than the old iteration, despite having more power and more engine to go with it. Visibility out of the mirrors for the bar ends are really nice. Again, super smooth engine allows nice crystal clear picture over you. And being that they're far out there, you do not see your body getting in the way in any way, shape or form. So it is very nice to see. Downshifting is nice and clean and the engine braking is very very manageable. You can feel what it's doing and you know where it's going. I wish that the microphone I have would bring out the sound, but it does have a nice little back pop as you're coming to a halt and using that engine braking. What I will do is I will put all of the, the specifications for the Rocket 3 GT in the um, description below. And the reason I do that is so I don't mix up numbers and all that. I've done that a few times in the past. And when you're on the fly, I just want to make sure that it's actually accurate information. So I will put that in the description below in terms of the power and all the things that it has. <laughs> Yeah, first gear to 45 is not a big deal. Second gear to 45, you're still 3,500 RPMs. There's a ton of different displacement motorcycles that that is, 
you know, pretty much, well, 45 and fifth gear, you know, this thing just doesn't care. Right now we're doing 45 in third gear, just under three grand again. And this seems to be a perfectly happy cruising gear for it. My live MPG saying 39.2 or so. So it's, it's happy where it's at. It's being economical for the engine it's got. Uh, it looks like it's average lifetime's 32.6. So not the best in terms of fuel mileage. Uh, but, I mean, why are you buying the Rocket 3? Is it to blast around town and have an enjoyable time? Uh, maybe, you know, some different touring abilities and things that it can do because it is a very nice platform. And I could see this being a worthy touring motorcycle because of just how nice and lazy it is. I've moved up to fourth gear just to see what we can do here, 2200 RPM at 45, and it actually has smoothed it out quite a bit. I do like it in fourth gear. Again though, look at that jump in speed. I mean, it doesn't matter. It, it, it can be sitting there very low at 2200 RPMs, and then you just put a little bit of load on it. I mean, that's just a twitch. There's nothing major in there, and you're immediately five, 10, 15 miles an hour more in, in a, such a short span of time, the engine is just potent in all regards. But it likes it likes this. This is perfect, man. It's just traveling right along nice and smooth. It feels 100% better than the original Rocket 3. This one has evolved into the ultimate muscle cruiser. And I've been on the Yavels, I've been on several powerful cruisers and there's just something about the Rocket 3, man. It It's the refined power cruiser out there it is definitely the most refined the m109 being the most raw the diavel being in between if you can find an old v-rod it was it was even a little bit more refined than the m109 but this one here is such a refinement of power and prestige that it is quite an amazing rider the clutch I will say, being that it is hydraulically assisted, is very light to the touch. It is not a beefy lever pull like uh, so many other motorcycles. It just, it's very light to the touch. And then whenever you're counting out, it is like almost every other um, hydraulic clutch in that the action is a little bit longer travel um, than your cable operated. So most of them, you're going to get a solid three three and a half and it's it's in the friction zone and releasing whereas this one you're getting up to a four four and a half and then it's finally through that friction zone and releasing so it's further out there on the hand grip than most of your standard cable operated types but that is pretty much a hallmark of every single hydraulically assisted clutch i know but the lightness of the pool is very much appreciated considering how much power that you are trying to tame uh, with this motorcycle uh, while you're going through the process of getting it going and everything. God, I love that sound. Such a, such a tame mumbled poppin'. Again, that transmission is smooth as silk. The throttle response in sport mode is fantastic. It's very linear and one-to-one, -one, and the fueling on this thing is just spot-on and perfect. The brake feel is very nice, very easy to modulate and feel out. So when we're coming up to a stop here, I do quite a bit of engine braking, add in the main brakes, she halts very nicely and again the bite from these front brakes and the rear is 
perfect and spot on and very, very easy to modulate and understand the feel of how much pressure you're putting on there. So it has a very good talk back to the rider. And that is something I appreciate in all motorcycles that do this. <laughs> Near 80 miles an hour in second gear right there. Very, again, easy to get up to speed with this thing. And I mean, it does get buzzy in those upper RPMs when you are reaching that 6,000 mark, but it is still pulling. It does not run out of breath. It just keeps on giving power. What a respectable machine this is. And I, I do, I love the way this one turns. The handling on this one is spectacular. It's very, very well balanced. And again, that friction zone, though it's out there, it's not dead. You can feel it, you know how to modulate it and where to put it so that way you can pull this massive power band around. Now this over area over here definitely has the rocking style of, um, of concrete because the construction zone has made everybody stop and fluid dynamics, all that good stuff, causing the, the concrete to actually buck a little bit. And uh, this is actually very comfortable. It, it goes over a little harshly, but not as bad as others. The only bike that I know of that can outdo this is the Pursuit. With its electric uh, uh, hydraulic suspension in the rear, but this one is just conventional and this is the best conventional suspension I have been on over that bump because normally I can feel every wave where this one just kind of chatted a little bit but just went over it nicely. So very well done on the suspension set. I do not know where its preloads are set either. So this may have more to give as well. And I know it probably has more to give because it only had 1700 miles on it. So I'm pretty sure nobody really played with the suspension. It is just what it is. Again, I really am enjoying the ride of this Rocket 3. When it comes to the heat, I've been out here long enough, I'm starting to get some of that engine heat uh, coming back to me. Now, anything like a V-twin is always gonna be, you know, there's gonna be heat, let's be real. So, with that being said, the engine's right there, right between your legs, just like a V-twin with that back cylinder head. So with your legs wrapped around it, I can feel heat on the inner thighs coming into play. Is it astounding heat? No, not really. You can kind of pull your legs back from the tank a little bit, get some fresh air, and you're back to going again. But if you keep your legs planted against that tank, the hotter and hotter they feel. So that is one thing to note, is there's definitely some heat coming back from that rear cylinder on on your leg and also your, your leg is right there on that manifold and uh, again if you kind of kick your leg out and get enough fresh air between it there's not much heat coming off of it but if you got your legs stuck especially for my size I do feel a little bit of heat from that manifold coming through the jeans right now uh, besides the upper part of my right leg I don't feel anything on the right side but I am getting some of that heat transfer on the left for sure. But that's not really that big of a deal. Trust me, I have been on much hotter motorcycles, my V-Rod included. That one by bar none has always been the hottest thing I've ever rode. And uh, anything, anything is better than that. I, I, I promise you that. So right now our temperature is 84, 85 degrees in Oklahoma City. Uh, we plan a 104, 103 degree high today. 
and uh, this would be a little bit warm for that kind of ride uh, but it's not undoable I mean I can like I said I got my legs backed off slightly and that fresh air is flowing nicely and it is cooling down so that is a good sign but I still feel that heat down in that lower part of my left leg which um, that is not going away no matter how much I move my leg it's still near that ankle so I am noticing that but at least it's not by the thigh or anything like that anymore uh, so I can deal with the one hot spot instead of a full leg being hot other than that that's about the only complaint I really have on this motorcycle it's very very nice to turn in very well balanced I mean look at this thing handling this we're about 42 miles an hour which is about as fast as any motorcycle as I've taken on this without touching down so it is handling that beautifully and then you just pull away because you have all the power in the world you don't have to worry about anything or anyone getting in your way just magnificent power and really nice ride I mean for a power cruiser you have power sporting and comfort all in one and that is something you cannot complain about so overall besides a little bit of hot spots on that lower left part of the leg there like I said kind of right here on my lower shin to near my ankle where that um, manifold drops out even if I pull my leg away I can still get some heat from that I'm going straight into the wind right now even and I still feel it there so there is that part it's a little hot spot but it's not even that bad it's just warm so to me I can handle that like I said I've been a much hotter where I've actually felt burning it's been so hot so this is better it's just a little warm giving you guys some heads up on that but everything the readability of the gauges and the sunlight the ergonomics of the handlebars the seating position the the mirror position just everything about this is pretty much darn near perfect it is a very well balanced and wonderful riding machine and very comfortable so I will give props to Triumph for this redo because this is magnificent the other one was just a little bit out of balance a little bit awkward and wonky to me but this one here is a great great ride and if you guys have not experienced one of these things yet I highly recommend hopping on one because this thing is quite enjoyable and quite fun so at any rate this is once again the rabbit hedgehog with indian motorcycle of oklahoma city if you have any questions for me leave them in the comments below also this motorcycle is available for sale through indian of oklahoma city and i will post a link to it as long as it is available once it is not i will remove the link but the review will stay because this review is for everyone at any rate, I want to thank my sponsors, AGV Sport USA, for providing the safety gear uh, that Rabbit Hedgehog uses and his team. I also want to thank Law Tigers of Oklahoma for protecting us uh, in the courtroom after an accident and the insurance company refuses to do right. And also Doug Crawford with USA Synthetics and his Amsoil distribution. We appreciate him taking care of and protecting the internals of our motorcycles and also being just an overall great guy and local supporter of motorcyclists everywhere. So at any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on the next ride.